Moi moi moi. Moi moi moi. I don't even believe this. What the? Did I just create a- Skip it up and down up! Hey all my dudes and dudettes, what is up? This is Byron the Multiple Interests Man here and welcome to another movie review and episode of Byron's Bios. Now today's movie review is going to be epic when I mention this. And you are not going to believe what movie that I'll be reviewing starting now. And it is one of the most recent popular movies that came out last summer. Not based on the entire life of Oppenheimer, but based on a biography called American Prometheus if I pronounced it correctly. Uh, it is also three hours long, and that is Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer. And yes, Christopher Nolan directed this movie. So the plot that I'll talk about will be summarized, so it'll be a little easier for me to discuss details of the film. And if you haven't seen it already, there will be some spoilers given away, so don't watch this review if you wish to avoid spoilers. And if you have already seen it, well, you've come to the right place. With that being said, the plot is where we get this doctoral student and physicist named J. Robert Oppenheimer, portrayed by Cillian Murphy, who focuses on many things in his life as a 22-year-old, including a top-secret Manhattan project that he would direct, where he studies, develops, and designs what would be the first nuclear weapon. And it comes to fruition on July 16, 1945, when they witness the world's very first nuclear explosion, also known as the father of the atomic bomb which would forever change the course of history. And not only that, but he falls from grace because of the security hearing in 1954. All I can say is that times are challenging for Oppenheimer, especially outside of those events. I'm not gonna lie, but everything about this movie was planned and executed very well. The storyline was followed very properly, especially as it's based on a biography that not a lot of people really know about, but I can definitely see where that movie is coming from. The acting itself is great as well. I thought Cillian Murphy did a phenomenal job portraying Oppenheimer, and same thing with Emily Bunt, who portrayed Oppenheimer's wife, Kitty, and Robert Downey Jr., who portrayed Louis Strauss. They acted just like how the character should act like, even as people who existed in reality. And hey, it was nice to see Josh Peck in the movie as well. The music scores are just thrilling and bone chilling. It gave me a lot of dramatic vibes that are definitely related to American history, and they were just phenomenal as they could be. And Shaw, even the effects in the movie were so real, including that nuclear explosion in one scene. And here's a fun fact. When they did this movie, the bomb they did was actually real, and it blew me away by seeing that on the big screen. And not only that, but the explosion sound at the end was exceedingly thrilling that it gave me nerve-wracking vibes, which that was awesome. When I saw this movie in theaters, I actually saw it twice. Now, I don't usually see the same movie in a theater more than once, but uh, I occasionally do. And the first time I saw Oppenheimer was with my dad, which he and I thought it was awesome the first time. And when I saw it the second time, I got to see it with one of my friends, and he thought it was okay. Though I enjoyed it a lot because of how much effort that Universal put in the movie. Except this may not be relevant to talk about, but when my friend and I were talking about the movie, he was saying the title of the movie wrong. Which he was like, oh, I can't believe we saw this Oppenheimer movie. And when I tried to correct him on how to pronounce it, just to help him out, he got all defensive and said, Oh, I don't like to be corrected! Well, there were times when I acted the same way as him. Pretty much in my life I did, but like I don't get offensive like I used to when someone would try to help me for a good reason. So I just backed off for his own sake. Since this is based off of true events in American history from the 40s and 50s, it is technically safe to say that this movie is Americanized, even though it was basically propaganda, and it is controversial in Japan, believe it or not. And that country gave the movie so much backlash because of the explosive scenes and how Oppenheimer developed the nuclear bomb. 
but it only failed to show the true reality of what and how it worked. Well, for Japan at least. Sure, bombs are exceedingly dangerous, but like this movie showed us the history of how they were made and how they were tested out. And what you gotta understand as well is that the movie isn't about bombing or Oppenheimer himself. It's mainly about the technology and ourselves as our role in the proliferation of it. And at the end of the day, this is why I give Oppenheimer 5 out of 5 stars. It is truly one of the greatest films ever made and one of the best Christopher Nolan movies I had ever seen in my life. And if you're into American history and if you haven't seen it, go check this movie out. I highly recommend it, especially for adults since it is rated R. And trust me, you'll get the same epic biological thrilling vibes as I did when I saw this movie. And you could also do some research on the person himself and how history could change the world, which it always does. That's why history exists for a reason, as if it's there for us to learn from our past, and as if it is part of a prophecy that this world may have regarding the true events. So there you have it. That is my review on Oppenheimer. I hope you guys enjoyed this movie review and episode of Byron's Bios. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe, and not to be repetitive, but pretty much that's all I have. Uh, thanks again, and this is me, Byron, signing off. Peace.